Black Ops 6's marketing has been insane. With the gameplay reveal trailer almost two months ago, followed up by a lot of ARG elements with things like the truthdies.com, and then continuing with more trailers like the Terminus Islands trailer, which you can find a breakdown of in the card up to my left. Then we've had not only complete gameplay breakdowns with 18 minutes of zombies footage as well as a new gameplay trailer, but we've had the opening cutscene for Liberty Falls, which is what this video is about. And more recently, we had a multiplayer reveal trailer on Monday. Now, I'm not going to be covering that one, uh, certainly not in this video. It's not really my style, but you can trust that I am looking forward to it. And now we've got the Black Ops 6 beta coming at the end of the week, not to mention the new phone Intel ARG that seems to be going on in the background with new images and even a voicemail to listen to. Altogether, the marketing for this game has been insane, and it's hard to tell when something is marketing or just the community being interested. Like Milo's whole hunt with the Dias cast going on a scavenger hunt in Washington, D.C. It's been incredible. People are super excited for this game, and I'm definitely one of them. So, we do have a trailer that came out last week, the Liberty Falls opening cutscene. And I, as I tend to do, have gone way too in-depth breaking it down, and I want to send that to you guys now. I hope you guys can get something new from this. I know there's been a lot of coverage for it, but I think I've found some things that other people haven't, and I'm looking forward to that. So without any further ado, let's get into the breakdown. So as the trailer begins, we hear the song We'll Meet Again, sung by Vera Lynn and written by Ross Parker and Huey Charles in 1939 for the film of the same name. It was the final song played by Peggy and Frank, the main characters, in front of several hundred Royal Air Force crew. Additionally, the song was used in 1964's Dr. Strangelove, or How how I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. This is arguably the more famous and more relevant here use of the song, as the film follows an attempt by the United States to stop a nuclear strike on the Soviet Union that was set in motion by an unhinged man acting on bad intel. Remember that for later. The song plays at the end of the film over real footage of nuclear weapons to demonstrate the ending of humanity. Importantly, this film was made during the relatively early days of the Cold War, and by the time of the events depicted in Black Ops Cold War, the film was already nearly 20 years old. This film was made just before color TV was mainstream. This isn't even the worst of it, as also during the Cold War, the song was packaged in with other music to go into underground radio stations to boost morale up to a hundred days after a nuclear attack in England. All of this is relevant because while the song also played at the final cutscene for Black Ops Cold War Zombies map Forsaken, as we see our crew being arrested, where they will eventually be brought to Terminus Island. The cutscene ends as we see Edward Richthofen, who is now our main focus in this trailer. Given the usage of this song, I wonder if it's hinting at his age. If he was born in 1939, it would put him at 52 as of 1991, when this game takes place, meaning the picture on his desk in Cold War was likely taken during the Korean War in the 1950s. As the trailer starts, the camera pans over some wooded mountains, sometime in the fall, and a road cutting across these mountains. We see our boy Eddie sitting against a tree, eating cherries next to his wife as their son plays in the background with what seems to be a ray gun. I did notice something that could have massive lore implications. As you can see, See, Richtofen takes two cherries from the basket and pops them in his mouth. Despite this, we never see him spit out the pits. Could this be hinting that Richtofen has dark ether powers and teleported the pits out of his mouth? As the wind picks up, Eddie offers to get his wife's sweater, and for the first time, we hear his voice with no filters. There's no denying it, Nolan North is back in the role, confirmed by this tweet. Unlike previous games, though, I'm not sure if he's donning the German accent. Instead, for parts of the trailer, he seems to have a more British inflection. Now, we're pretty sure Nolan voiced the director in Cold War and had a much more American accent there. This could have just been a further attempt to mask his voice, however. Being from England would actually lend further credence to the things I mentioned earlier regarding the music. As Rick Duffin walks away, he begins clutching his heart. The background starts to desaturate, and the music starts to distort. We see flames behind him, and as he turns around, his family's playing in the fire. Now, Eddie yells for Maya, his wife, to run. I've listened to this trailer so many times, and I'm fairly confident that's the name he yells, which is interesting given one of our playable characters on the other map, Terminus, shares this name. Given the playable Maya's unknown connections to Richtofen, it'll be interesting to see if anything comes of this. The two creepily look at the camera, and Maya still looks human but my god what is wrong with Samuel's face oh what's that 
How do we know his name? Well, it's time to go back in time to the Cold War. In Intel for Black Ops Cold War, we first hear about the boy in Season 2's Firebase Z, while Samantha Maxis is trapped in the Dark Aether. From Maxis' diary entry about halfway through, Maxis states, But one face stands out from all others, the face of a child, a boy. He's lost, damaged, I want to help it. But somehow I feel that he's dangerous. Dreams are unreliable witnesses, as too am I. Sometimes I find it hard to sleep. Later on in Season 2, we got an audio log of Weaver speaking to Maxis about her being uncooperative, and she retorts about him leaving a boy behind to die. We don't seem to hear about the boy again until Season 4, until Maxis leaving a diary entry about the day Weaver killed a young boy, while trying to take out a different target. We learn that he burned down his target's house to cover his tracks, and the boy was inside. Now, Quarantine Diary 9 is a pretty messed up thing, so I'm going to be reading the whole thing. I remember waiting for your call. 10, 11, 12, the phone never rang. Instead, I saw news of the explosion on TV. I couldn't sleep. 3 a.m. I heard a knock at my apartment door. You gave the keyword and I let you in. We'd never met face to face before. It was a shock to finally meet you. You were in a bad way. I did my best to dress your wounds, but it was the first and only time I ever saw you cry. You mumbled something about not knowing, about how sorry you were. You torched the place to cover your tracks after the hit. You said the boy was supposed to be staying with his mother, but he wasn't. He was there, in the house while it burned to the ground. Finally, in Season 6, we got two audio logs regarding the boy. In my orders, Weaver and Maxis forgive each other and maybe themselves for what happened. We both know how badly things can go south if we act impulsively. You're talking about the boy, aren't you? And the mother. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't yours either, Sam. Thanks for calling, Weaver. I'll see you in the morning. Goodbye, Sam. And then there's one final reference to the boy in season six with the audio log naturally titled The Boy. His name was Samuel, and I, we, will forever feel responsible for his death. I gave the intel to Weaver, the intel he acted upon. That's what we're all supposed to do, right? Act on the available intel. That's just what Weaver did. Act. Unfortunately, his actions resulted in collateral damage that neither of us will ever be able to forgive ourselves for. I'm sorry. I know he is too, but I still have a terrible feeling that the events of that day may yet come back to haunt us. I just need you to know. I am sorry. Despite Weaver's assurance, Samantha still blames herself, and her worry about the day coming back to haunt them was warranted, as we know after this Sam sacrificed herself, going back into the Dark Aether and destroying it from the inside, allowing its power to be absorbed. Richtofen's plan came to fruition here, capturing the Forsaken and getting Sam out of the picture in one go. He then captured Weaver and the rest of Requiem to be kept at Terminus Island. We get a little jump scare from Maya and Samuel before Eddie wakes up from his nightmare. He's in Liberty Falls, West Virginia, a place we've had info about fed to us for the past four years. All the way back in Cold War once again, we got a piece of intel titled Progress Report, a document sent to Director Richtofen around the time of the events of Forsaken. It details efforts to clear citizens out of a town in West Virginia and some large boring project under this town. Uh, sorry, that's boring, not boring. I'm not reading the whole thing because it is pretty long, but it's been on screen the whole time, so if you want to read through it yourself, feel free to pause and go through that. More recently, we've heard a lot about Liberty Falls in Modern Warfare Zombies. One of our contacts, Crystal Miller, talks about the town for the first time in audio log number 25, released in Season 3 of Modern Warfare Zombies Life Cycle. Miller spoke to Ravanoff, telling him about her history with this kind of thing, about the town she grew up in. Ravanoff already knew about what happened, and offers to help her connect the dots if she'll tell him what she remembers. Now, to be completely honest, he does not do this. He doesn't- I don't think he ever talks to her again. She continues on with the story of how she survived the outbreak in audio logs 31 and 32 from seasons 4 and 5 respectively. But I'm already enough off topic as it is. The final important time we hear about Liberty Falls in Modern Warfare Zombies was recently in the season 5 reloaded cutscene. After stopping the entity, the primary antagonist of Modern Warfare Zombies, Ava Jensen, the daughter of Samantha Maxis and Ravenoff, but that's besides the point, is researching Liberty Falls and Edward Richtofen while Ravenoff wants her to leave. The big things we see here are first, Ava opens a folder and we see a transcript of a man named John Branchard interviewing Miller after what happened in Liberty Falls across from a picture of Eddie himself. The second thing is the room Ava's in during this cutscene. At the end, she gets lured by something in her mirror that she calls Mother. Keep these things in mind as we return to the Liberty Falls trailer as Richtofen gets out of bed, then hears an alert state that a breach is occurring. Richtofen rushes over to a set of monitors and from the time on screen, the breach appears to have begun at exactly 
exactly three o'clock on the dot. A scientist tells him that something's wrong with Sam. Richtofen tells the scientist to secure his staff, but as he continues, saying he'll handle Sam himself, the scientist is surrounded by mist before several hands grab him and the feed ends. I did skip over one important detail. As they were talking, Richtofen turned to a nearby display and grabs the OG wonder weapon, the Wunderwaffe DG2. He powers it up and moves out to help. In the hallway, a soldier is thrown through a doorway by the undead, and Richtofen saves him with a shot from the Wonder Waffle. Eddie calls this guard Branchard, the name I told you to remember. This is the man who will go on to interview Miller when the outbreak is contained. Eddie tells him to secure the command post, call in response teams, and get Liberty Falls secured. It's safe to say this guy will be the first of our playable crew for Liberty Falls. Now, I have no evidence for this, but I swear Johnny Boy here is played by John Bernthal, the guy who played the Punisher in the Netflix TV show. I just think that's neat. Eddie continues on, and we see that Project Janice's base of operations seems to be in a museum of sorts. I like how when Eddie fires the Wonder Waffle, you can see he has a smile on his face. At least some part of him is enjoying this. And as he moves down the stairs, people have insisted they look like the Kino stairs, and I just don't see it. I do, however, see a set of film reels behind him, so maybe they're onto some. The way the Wonder Weapon just utterly dusts the zombies is awesome to me, and I hope the gameplay can somewhat reflect that. Eddie comes up to an elevator with a bioscan lock, and as he scans his hand and vocally identifies, identifies himself, the scanner turns red, which is odd. He continues fighting off zombies in a genuinely awesome fight scene as he continues, inciting an emergency override and using a zombie's face to activate the scanner. I thought this was weird too, but maybe the scanner can also do retinal scans? I mean, the zombie was definitely a guard before. We get this awesome shot of Richtofen blasting a zombie as he falls back. Treyarch really gotta be showing off that Omni movement again, huh? And the doors close. He only has a moment to breathe before the same mist that surrounded the scientist surrounds him. He swears to Sam that she'll never be free, and we hear a distinctive musical cue. As many have already noted, that is Samantha's Rest, a musical number from Origins in 2013. Sam teleports Eddie away and breaks the Wonder Waff's bulbs as the elevator doors open, revealing a revamped version of the Forsaken's containment unit from Black Ops Cold War, as Sam says, Edward, I already am. Now I swear someone said that if you line up the trailer, she says this at the same time as the breach opens in the Terminus trailer, but I can't find the post claiming this, and they definitely don't seem to line up from what I can tell. Let me know if you see something I don't. Now, in the time it's taken me to make this, we've continued getting content drops from Black Ops 6. First and foremost was the multiplayer reveal trailer on Monday. We got a good look at Liberty Falls through one of the multiplayer maps set in the same location. This includes a video store and a chicken restaurant, and additionally, there's a phone Intel ARG that has released several images that are on screen now, and an audio recording that reveals we might not be the only ones fighting against Richtofen. Dr. Pericles Panos, Project Janus, Energy Research Division. It has become abundantly clear. Director Richtofen is slipping. If we fail, it will all be down to Richtofen and his hubris. Now these images are interesting to me because they seem to indicate that the map is going to be way bigger than we were led to believe. We've been told up to now that Terminus is the large open map and Liberty Falls is going to be the smaller, more contained map. But these images seem to indicate that it could be massive and with a dark ether portal downstairs in the church, who knows? we could be looking at a pretty open area. So I've taken long enough making this that COD Next has happened, and we've had the reveal of Liberty Falls. Quite a few content creators have gotten the chance to play the map early and show us what it's like. Unfortunately, the consensus is it's kind of lacking in personality. And for some reason, there's an odd amount of people upset over the PAP-1 camo. A lot of people have been saying it looks like the ray gun was just stuffed with beans, and I think that's a little unfair. I think the PAP-1 camo looks a lot better than people are giving it credit for, and the PAP-2 and 3 camos look gorgeous. I love them. But more importantly, these personality issues that have plagued the game since Cold War, they are definitely present here. That said, I do have a couple things to note. First of all, I think the map design isn't that bad. I think the lighting engine really holds it back. The map being set during the daytime, and especially when during the daytime it takes place around the mid-afternoon, the map looks a little flat because of the way the shadows are implemented. But if you take a map like Togder Toten or something like that, the lighting engine really helps there, even though it's something we'd seen before. The lighting really helped to sell that map or something like Shangri-La. Of course, I think those maps did have more personality just by default, but the lighting really did help sell those maps. Even something in Cold War, like D-Machine, I felt like it handled it a little better with the way the lighting was implemented. So I think that is something we're missing here. But 
it doesn't solve all the problems. There's also issues with the overall map layout feeling very lanes based. That is to say, it's like a multiplayer map. It's very wide open and not too catered to how zombies is played. This was an issue stuff like Forsaken really faced in Cold War. D Machine kind of managed it pretty well and Maurer Toten was kind of perfect for what I think zombies should be from now on, where it took elements of uh, multiplayer and campaign maps and combined them and edited them in ways that made an interesting layout for zombies. This is seemingly just the Liberty Falls multiplayer map ported over. Maybe I'm wrong, but it is a bit unfortunate. Now, of course, Liberty Falls is the secondary map. It's the casual experience. It's meant to bring in those multiplayer players, let them feel something familiar. And for a while, that is something the zombies community understood. Terminus was the meat and potatoes, and then Liberty Falls was over to the side. It was the extra side dish we were getting. It was the nuke town. But the, the trailer that I'm breaking down in most of this video changed a lot of our minds. We saw Richthofen, we saw so much story, we saw a gorgeous museum area and the underground lab and we got our hopes up. It looked like Liberty Falls would have a lot of personality to it, and that just doesn't seem to be present. Now that said, I still like the map. I, uh, unlike a lot of people on Reddit and Twitter right now, I think Liberty Falls still looks like a lot of fun. And I'm hoping we haven't seen all of the map, which is the second thing. There's likely to be some kind of lab section, underground section, even maybe the museum, that we're gonna be able to access to get, like, the Wonderwaff and stuff like that, and to interact with Samantha. And I'm hoping that like the map 5 for example it's going to take up a good chunk of the map and is going to add a lot to the overall personality 5 is not the best zombies map in terms of design it's just the pentagon a lot of it's taken from the campaign and it's not the best in terms of its overall design but the lab area adds a lot of atmosphere to it and if we didn't have that lab area i feel like a lot less people would like five's design if we have some kind of lab area or underground section that could really add some contrast to the upper ground sections of the map and would add a lot for the atmosphere that said there are also a couple of things that i noticed in the gameplay that are relevant to this trailer for example there's no operators from what i understand Terminus will have a set crew and Liberty Falls will just have operators. I misspoke a moment ago, but whatever. I'm not editing it. It's fine. It's canon. It does look like Liberty Falls is not going to have a set crew. The character that I thought was played by John Bernthal unfortunately doesn't seem to be, but he's also our announcer, handler, contact. I've been going with contacts. That's how I've been referring to them. Uh, like Ravenoff or in Cold War, Weaver and Grey or in Terminus. Uh, it's going to be Dr. Peck and Dr. Strauss. And I think Raptor one, but I think he'll play less of a role. Finally, I will say, and this is unrelated to the trailer, I just need to bring it up the jet gun rocks it looks awesome so it's gonna have two fire modes which is gonna be the primary mode the just jet gun sucking that we are used to from transit and to a lesser extent with die rise not die rise and to a lesser extent with the machine but then it also has an alternate fire which is gonna be more of a big explosion type attack and both of these are going to overheat the gun the sucking attack just gradually but then the big blast is gonna overheat the gun all at once and thankfully the gun does not explode explode when it overheats. Could you imagine if they brought that back? No. God, please, no. No, thankfully it just overheats and then it'll reload over time. Hopefully more can come about with Liberty Falls. I think the map has a lot of potential and we've been hearing about it non-stop since Cold War and the cutscene had me really excited. So I hope there's more to this map that we haven't seen and that it can live up to some of those expectations. But if not, Terminus looks like a genuinely super atmospheric map and it's gonna do a lot for the beginning of this game but Treyarch has also confirmed that we are getting another map before the end of the year so they have another chance if it's a map like Liberty Falls appears to be right now Black Ops 6 may not be in the state we were hoping for but this hasn't really lessened my hope for the game all that much it still looks incredible i'm still looking forward to making all kinds of content for it altogether we've had a wild few weeks and with the black ops 6 beta coming this weekend it looks like it's only going to get crazier from here now i've been working pretty much non-stop on a couple of videos for you guys but i hope you can recognize i don't do this as a primary job i'm doing this for fun and if i can get something interesting out there that you guys enjoy then i'll really appreciate that and i hope you guys do too other than that i really just watch these trailers and find these crazy links 
that I don't think are actually going to mean anything, but it's fun to flex my brain a little bit. For example, the Maya Aguinaldo thing back in the Terminus trailer and how she might be related to the first president of the Philippines. Maybe that means nothing. Maybe I'm making it up. But it's cool to me. Just like that, there were a couple things in this trailer I thought were interesting that I hope you guys find interesting too. Now, I will be playing the Black Ops 6 beta this weekend, and I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully, my friend GG Galaxy Guts over at Twitch can join me on that. But if not, you guys get all me, and that's okay. Other than that, I've been playing a lot of COD Zombies just for the channel otherwise. I've been playing a lot of Modern Warfare Zombies every Friday. I just finished the Cold War campaign that I was playing every Thursday. Before that, I was playing Black Ops 1 and 2. So I have a lot of Call of Duty content available. That's not even mentioning every Sunday when I play Zombies. The most recent one we did was Alpha Omega on Black Ops 4, and we're planning to do Togger Toten this weekend. After that, we'll be moving on to Black Ops Cold War, and I might fit in some Black Ops 3 content before Black Ops 6 releases. So please look forward to that. That's all I've really got to say. I've kind of inundated your ears with bullshit, so I hope you guys liked that. Other than that, though... I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to be gay and do crimes, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.